Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly9078, and today I'm building the Scout. After the build, be sure to check out my channel to vote for the next one, and hey, maybe check out my Patreon too, if you want. So what do we want from this build? Well, the Scout's big claim to fame is his speed. He runs ahead of the team, dodges enemy gunfire, and gets to the objective quicker than any other class. He's also got a double jump, letting him reach areas and clear gaps that other classes would have to blow themselves up for, and certain weapons extend his jumps even further. Scout lacks a bit in the durability department, but he does have Bonk, an atomic energy drink that renders him invulnerable for a short time. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be using the standard point array. If you want to roll for stats, that's fine, just make sure your dexterity and wisdom are high enough to multi-class. Starting off with a 13 in strength. Jumping is athletics, and we're good at jumping. Dexterity is 15, we're fast and we shoot good. But since we have the lowest HP of any of the mercenaries, we'll make constitution 10. We'll dump intelligence. We don't need it for anything, and we can just let the medic and the engineer do the thinking. But if we're going to scout, we need good perception, so wisdom will be 14. And we'll finish up with a 12 in charisma. Scout is very much the cocky, quippy kid of the group. We're from Boston, one of the big melting pot cities, so we'll go with half-elf, specifically half-wood elf. Half-elves get plus 2 to their charisma and plus 1 to any two stats, I'll say round off strength and dex. We have 60 feet of dark vision, advantage on saves against being charmed, and can't be put to sleep by magic. And thanks to our heritage, our base walking speed is 35 feet instead of the more standard 30. Scout knows his mother, of course, and she's human. So it must be our unknown absentee father who's the wood elf, wherever that deadbeat is. Just like our teammates, we're a mercenary. So a mercenary veteran will give us athletics, persuasion, and land vehicle proficiencies. Then we'll start off as a ranger, getting us three skills from the ranger list, like perception, stealth, and insight. Scout is the first one to rush into enemy territory, so Natural Explorer gives us advantage on initiative checks, and on attacks we make on our first turn in combat, as long as the creature we're attacking hasn't acted yet. We also ignore difficult terrain, and get a bunch of bonuses to overland travel. All the mercenaries are humanoid, even the pyro, so that's what we'll take for our favored enemy, giving us plus two to our weapon damage against them, and we get advantage on survival and intelligence checks about them. Second level rangers get spells starting off with two druid cantrips from the druidic warrior fighting style. Way, way back during the Harley Quinn build, we established that a quarterstaff is a decent stand-in for a baseball bat, since you can use it one or two-handed. So Shillelagh will turn our bat magical, and let us use our wisdom to attack with it instead of our strength. They're the same, of course, so this is really just in case we need magic damage. Then Magic Stone whips up a couple of baseballs to hit with our fancy bat. We make up the three pebbles magical, then either we or another person can throw one to deal 1d6 plus our wisdom modifier and damage. They can be thrown by hand or with a sling, and if you use a sling, they have a range of 60 feet. I would say that smacking one with a baseball bat is a decent substitute for using a sling, but that's between you and your DM. For actual ranger spells, Hail of Thorns blasts away with our scatter gun. The first time we hit with a ranged weapon after casting the spell, the target and any creatures within 5 feet have to make a dexterity save, or take 1d10 piercing damage, half on a success. Then Jump whips out the Atomizer to give us not just a double jump, but a triple jump, as the spell triples our jump distance. Primeval Awareness lets us focus for a minute to sense where our favored enemies are hiding, as long as they were within 5 miles of us, and as a Horizon Walker, we can use our action to sense the location of the nearest planar portal within a mile. We're also a planar warrior. As a bonus action, we can call out a creature within 30 feet, then the first attack we hit them with in the same turn is converted to force damage, as well as dealing an additional 1d8 force damage. Long Strider boosts our speed by an extra 10 feet, and as a Horizon Walker, we get protection from evil and good for free. We do need to be able to use guns, so the Gunner Feet will give us proficiency with them. It also bumps our dexterity, and lets us shoot while next to an enemy without getting disadvantage. Helpful since the Scatter Gun is more effective at close range. It also lets us ignore our gun's loading property, so we can fire it twice when we get extra attack at level 5. For second level spells, Enhance Ability gives us advantage on checks using the ability score of our choice, and if we picked a physical score, we get an extra bonus. The one we're interested in is Strength, which doubles our carrying capacity, so we can push the payload at twice the speed. Then Horizon Walker gives us Misty Step for an actual double jump, instead of just extending our jump distance. We can run, jump, then in midair use our bonus action to teleport up to 30 feet. For our greater favorite enemy, we'll pick Constructs to play some rounds of Man vs. Machine. We get the same advantage on checks against constructs as we do against humanoids. Our weapon damage bonus for both doubles to plus 4, and we have advantage on saves against the abilities of constructs, though we don't get the same against humanoids. Clearly, we learn to outwit the machine's programming, whereas a human would be better able to adapt on the fly. 7th level Horizon Walkers can chug a bonk with Ethereal Step. Once per rest, we can cast Etherealness as a bonus action, becoming ghostly and intangible as we shift into the Ethereal Plane. While there, we can move in any direction, though moving up or down costs extra movement, and we're unaffected by any creatures or objects that aren't also on the ethereal plane. Unlike casting the spell with a spell slot, we only get the effects until the end of the current turn. 
then we pop back to normal. Then we'll get a ranger staple, Hunter's Mark. We mark a creature, then every time we hit them with a weapon attack, we deal an extra 1d6 damage, and we get advantage on checks made to find them if they run and hide. The spell lasts for an hour, but if we kill the creature we marked before then, we can use a bonus action to shift the mark to another creature. At 8th level, we'll grab the Mobile Feet, increasing our speed by 10 feet, and letting us avoid provoking opportunity attacks from creatures we smack with our bat. Then Fleet of Foot, the Ranger version, not the Wood Elf version, helps us take full advantage of our increased speed by letting us dash as a bonus action. There's not much more from Ranger I'm interested in, but Monk gives us the very useful Unarmored Defense, adding our wisdom to our AC while not wearing armor. Scout runs around in a t-shirt, so he needs to bob and weave. There's also Martial Arts, which ups our bat game by letting us use Dexterity for our baseball bat attacks, and Unarmored Movement, boosting our speed by a further 10 feet. We get one more double jump in Step of the Wind, as our key lets us dash or disengage as a bonus action, and doubles our jump distance for the turn. This does stack with the jump spell, by the way, for a total of 6 times the normal jump. Scout self-describes as a force in nature, and the way of the four elements gives us the gun of the same name, by letting us spend two key points to cast Thunder Wave, a short-range scattergun blast that deals thunder damage and knocks the enemy back 10 feet on a failed con save. And deflect missiles is kind of just what you do with a baseball bat. We can swing for the fences as a reaction to reduce the damage from an incoming projectile by 1d10 plus our dex and monk level. Then, if that reduces the damage to zero, we can spend a key point to send it flying as a ranged attack. At 4th level, we'll take the Athlete feat to bump up our strength. We can make a running jump with, after only 5 feet of run-up rather than 10, and kip up from prone with 5 feet instead of half of our speed. Plus, we finally learn how to climb a tree, since climbing no longer costs us extra movement. Falling out of a tree still hurts though, so slow fall reduces our falling damage by 5 times our monk level. We'll finish off as a Fighter. We can take a breather with Second Wind, healing for 1d10 plus our Fighter level as a bonus action once per rest, and we can pick a fighting style. Superior Technique gives us a single superiority die, a d6 that refills on any rest, that we can use for our pro gamer evasive footwork, adding the d6 to our AC if we need to move through a particularly well defended point. Action Surge at level 2 lets us take a second action on our turn once per rest, so we can dash, bonus action dash, then action surge dash for a total of 165 feet, or we can just bonk someone with our baseball bat a bunch, whatever works. Criticola is apparently part of the Breakfast of Champions, as champion fighters have improved critical, meaning we can crit on both 19s and 20s. And with a capped off dexterity modifier from our 4th and 6th level ASIs, our bat and scatter gun are doing more damage and hitting more often than ever before. Plus we have a spare point from the 6th level one to round off our strength. I did skip over 5th level just now, but that's because all we get is extra attack, and that doesn't stack with the extra attack we already got from rangers, so it doesn't matter. 7th level champions are remarkable athletes, meaning we can add half our proficiency bonus to any ability check we make that uses strength, dex, or con, as long as it doesn't already use our proficiency. Most notably, this does include initiative, since that's a dex check, so we can always be the first out of the gate. We can also add our strength modifier in feet to the length of our long jumps. Our capstone is the 8th level of fighter for one last ability score, let's bump our wisdom up for better perception and unarmored defense. Now that the build is complete, let's take a look and see what we have done. Well, our biggest selling point is definitely our mobility. With all of our buffs active between Long Strider, Jump, Action Surge, and Step of the Wind, we have almost 260 feet of movement, and we can jump 115 feet. So we can make two huge, over 100 foot jumps, as long as we land for 5 feet in between them. Plus, for one turn per rest, we can go intangible with Ethereal Step and move 160 feet to just get right into the enemy base. But even that makes sense, because you can't drink a bonk while you're carrying the intelligence. We also have very consistent damage. Between Planar Warrior and Hunter's Mark, we're adding an extra 1d8 and 1d6 to our first attack every turn, and Planar Warrior makes it force damage, which will affect almost anything we have to fight. One of our biggest weak points, I would say, is we have a lot going on with our bonus action. Hunter's Mark, Planar Warrior, Step of the Wind, even just our regular dash from Fleet of Foot. There's just a lot going on there, so it could be hard to pick the right thing for the situation. Our other big disadvantage is we have very limited resources. We only have one superiority die per rest for our evasive footwork, we only have four key points per rest, and Thunder Wave takes up two of them if we need to cast it, and we've only got seven spell slots since we're a ranger. Not to mention Hunter's Mark and Hail of Thorns both take up our concentration. Listening? Okay. <laughs> Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. Boink! I'm a force of nature. Boom! If you were from where I was from, you'd be f***ing dead. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed the build. Head on over to my community tab if you want to vote for the next character for me to do. This week is between Kaito Joker once again, Mysterious Idol X Alter, Himiko Toga, and our runner-up from last time, Kukulin from Fate. 
If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below and they could show up in a future poll. Leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support what I'm doing here you can check the description for the link to my Patreon, for access to the Discord channel, early access to future builds, and exclusive Patreon content. Thanks again for watching, I will see y'all later.